Welcome back, everyone. We just finished reading the story, The Animal's Winter Sleep. And it was telling you about a lot of different winter animals and what they do at nighttime when it's all snowy and cold outside. Where do they go? We go home. But they have different kinds of homes. In the book, we were also seeing, we could see their tracks in the snow. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to make tracks in the snow. And our snow is salt dough. And I'm not going to make it with you right now, but I have some that I made that I'm going to show you how I made my tracks. And I'm going to show you some of my finished products. But salt dough is very, very easy to make. You just use salt, flour, and water. You have to have a mixing bowl, some measuring cups, and a big spoon, and your hands. And so, here we have our finished product, salt dough. And I think the recipes usually call for like two cups of flour, a cup of salt, a cup of water. Well, I only made half, and I made enough salt dough that I made four of my tracks, and I have all of this that I can make at least two more tracks in them. And so let's look inside our bag because you're saying, well, Miss Mary, I don't know how to make animal tracks. Inside our bag, I have included a little sheet that has different animal tracks on it. And so you can look at these and um, use this as a guide to make your animal tracks. Some are easier than others. Some are for animals that we have around here on the Eastern Shore. Um, and so I'm using two wild animals that we have plenty of here on the Eastern Shore. And then I'm using a domesticated animal that a lot of people have as pets. Also, I've got a lot, there's a lot of books out that you can go to the library to get that talk about animal tracks. And so we were talking about the ones in the snow, but you can also find them if um, you don't have snow, but it's been raining you, and you're taking a walk, there'll be tracks in the mud. Or if you go to the beach, there's tracks in the sand. So I'm going to show you the tracks I made. And what I did is I painted it so you could see the track a little bit easier. This is a duck. Here's a very common one down here. This is a deer. <clears throat> this is a small dog that I made this one. And then my great nephew, Torin, said, that's not a dog track. I, he said, have Molly make a track. Molly is my dog. So here is Molly's footprint in the salt dough. So if you have a dog that is very patient and will make a track for you, go ahead and do that. It won't stick on their, their paws at all. So you're saying, what do I do now that I have, I've mixed my salt dough? Well, for one thing, you can see that it is sticky. So you want to have something down that you can make it on. Um, there's two ways to dry it. You can either put it in the oven at a low temperature, like 200, 250 for about an hour, and you want to flip it over about halfway through, and that way it would dry in the one day. Or you could just <clears throat> do what we call air drying, which is we, make it and then we just leave it out and let the air dry it. That takes a lot longer. That takes several days. So what you wanna do is you make a little ball and then you flatten it out. And I have big hands. Um, so I can't really use my fingers to make the tracks except for like the dogs. So what I've used is the bottom of 
a pencil or a pen, but you can have your little friends use their fingers to poke into the dough. So say you were going to make the duck or bird. If you look on here, they have a few, they have a few birds that you could use. What you want to do is you basically make the three dots, two across from each other, one a little higher up, and then you would um, make one down at the bottom, and then you want to take something like um, a toothpick or your fingernail, and then you just make a long line in the dough from the top down to the bottom. And when you do that, you end up with something that looks like this. Make sure that you've made, uh, you don't want to push it all the way down to the bottom because then you won't be able to pull it up very easy. But you want to make enough of an impression, an indentation, so you can see it. So there's my, I know you can't see that very well. Here's my duck one. And so, see how fast and easy that was? And so you say, well, how about, how did you do the dog one that you didn't have Molly step on? And so, once again, I make a ball, and then I flatten the ball. So it comes out, so it looks kind of like a plate. And then, as you can see, I'm also doing footprints, pads for the dog. And in this case, it's four. And I'm going to use my little finger because I can do that with the dog. So I just make four, pressing down, and four. And so I have the top part. I can even use my big finger for this. And then for the bottom part, what I did to make their palm or pad part of it is that I made three dots right next to each other, kind of like in a triangle. And then you have your dog print. So now you're done the hard part. All you have to do is let it dry now. And remember, whether you're air drying it or drying it into in the oven, you want to flip it over. Um, if you're air drying it, you want to flip it several times a day. So the back dries as well as the front. And so th this will stay for a really long time. Also, if, you have, if you've made one and you have extra and you want to do something with it later, this will keep. I made this dough two weeks ago, and all I did is kept it in a plastic baggie. I made sure they had the top sealed, and if it gets sticky, see it's starting to get a little sticky, you just put a little more flour on it and mix it in until it's workable again. So that is how you make the salt dough, and that's a track. But I also did two other experiments, science experiments, math experiments, um, that you can make fake snow, that you can make tracks in also. And these also, in, you use very simple things to make them. One of them uses cornstarch, and shaving cream. What? Yes, cornstarch and shaving cream. And it makes, and I'm going to bring this up so you can see, it's hard to mix it. The shaving cream is hard to mix because it, it's all over the place. So what I did is I made sure I put, um, I would put some of the cornstarch in and then some of the, all of the shaving cream and then more of the uh, cornstarch. And you can mix it with a big spoon or a spatula. 
And if you can see, this is like snow. And so what you can do then is after you've mixed this, and this is also a few days old because I wanted to see what would happen. When I first made it, it filled the whole bowl and it was very much like wet snow. And so what you would want to do is have a tray and pour your snow out on it. And then you can play in your snow and you can make a track in your snow. There's my handprint in the snow. So this is something that, you know, ingredients that most people have at home. Um, and it's very easy to make. And we'll give you the website that, um, to give you the information where you can find the recipe to make this. And then another one I made that uses very simple ingredients that you can make, that you probably have at home. And you can make another kind of snow. I'm going to push this snow back. Make a little snow fort there. This one uses baking soda. And conditioner. And you want to make sure that you get white conditioner so it makes a color of snow. And when you mix this together, this also makes a type of a snow and it feels different than your cornstarch and shaving cream. This feels cold like the snow and you can make a snowball well, you could make a snowman with your fake snow. So I have included the websites that you can get these instructions off of, and you will find that on our website, wardmuseum.org. Go make some snow and have fun.